Smile and learn. Hello, friends. Today we're going to discover other places where living beings live. These places are known as habitats. Did you know that? We call a habitat a place that has the necessary resources so that living beings can survive. These resources are the light, the water, the temperature, the ground, and the oxygen. Depending on what these resources are, we can find very different habitats. There are two types of natural habitats, terrestrial and aquatic. Today, I'm going to travel to the terrestrial habitats. Are you coming with me? Desert. My, my, it's so hot. Look, we're in the desert. There's a lot of light here, and the temperature is very high. It rains very little in the desert, and water is scarce. For this reason, many animals and plants have developed strategies to accumulate water. This cactus is an example. Animals like scorpions, Snakes or mammals, like camels, or dromedaries can live in the desert. Did you know that there are cold deserts too? Here, everything is frozen and temperatures are extremely cold. There are barely any plants in these habitats. However, we are able to find some animals that have adapted to be able to live in them like the polar bear. Jungle. We continue our trip. Look how many plants there are. This habitat is the jungle. Here, there's lots of rain and temperatures are mild or warm. This favors a humid environment in which there are many living beings. Let's see which ones we can find here. Look, an orchid! And a hummingbird! This can be a panther or a jaguar! I think I'm leaving. I don't want to be his dinner! Woods. We're in the woods! Here too, there is plenty of vegetation. Mainly trees like beech trees or pine trees and shrubs or bushes like the rock rose or the arbutus. Did you know that there are many types of woodlands? Their temperature may vary from cold to warm and because of this, the vegetation and the animals we find there change. In the woods, we can find some animals like bears or eagles. Here too, it rains often. I think that this cloud means a storm is coming. Let's continue our trip! Prairie We've just arrived at a prairie. This habitat is characterized by small plants like grass and animals like foxes or rodents. The climate in the prairie is humid. Winters are cold and summers are warm. Savanna. Another habitat with little vegetation is the savanna. Savannas are usually dry areas where it rains very little. However, we distinguish two periods, a dry season with low temperatures and a season that rains a lot with warm temperatures. The latter one is called the humid season. Here we can find grass, herbs, non-woody plants, and some trees like baobabs. Among the animals, we find many herbivores like elephants, zebras, or giraffes. There are also carnivorous animals like lions or cheetahs. Today we have seen the terrestrial habitats, among which we find deserts, jungles, woods, prairies, and savannas. But we still have aquatic habitats left to visit. Don't miss the next video! See you soon!
Hello again, friends! In the previous video, we talked about habitats. Do you remember what they are? We call a habitat a place that has the necessary resources so that living beings can survive. These resources are the light, the water, the temperature, the ground, and the oxygen. Depending on what these resources are, we can find very different habitats. There are two types of natural habitats, terrestrial and aquatic. In the previous video, we traveled over terrestrial habitats. Today, we will be visiting aquatic habitats. Are you coming with us? Rivers and lakes. Rivers and lakes are freshwater habitats. There, we can find many animals among which fish like trouts. Small plants like water lilies also grow there. Oceans and seas. Oceans and seas are saltwater habitats. There we find a great diversity of animals, like whales, sharks, coral, or seahorses. There are also plants that grow in the sea, like seaweed. In aquatic habitats, the living beings have adapted to carry out their activities under the water. An example would be fish bronchia that allow them to breathe underwater. In these habitats, light is a very important resource too, and sometimes due to contamination, it cannot reach deep enough to the bottom of rivers, lakes, or oceans, leaving the living beings without an essential resource. Today we learned that aquatic habitats are distinguished as freshwater rivers and lakes and saltwater oceans and seas. That was all about habitats. See you soon. Today we're going to learn what an ecosystem is, its components, and the different types of ecosystems found on Earth. Ready to learn about them? An ecosystem is the community of the living organisms and the natural resources of the environment in which they live. Ecosystems are found in different parts of the planet. They can be very big, like the Sahara Desert, or much smaller and circumscribed, like the Dead Sea. But how do we identify ecosystem coverage? The flora and fauna of each ecosystem have adapted to live according to the characteristics and resources of their surroundings. The interaction among them defines the ecosystem and its coverage, that's why there are so many types of ecosystems. Ecosystems consist of a biotope and a biocenosis. Let's see what they are. The physical characteristics of the surroundings are called a biotope. These characteristics include non-living elements like the soil, the water, the air, the wind, the light, or the temperature. The biological community that lives in those surroundings is called biocenosis. That is to say, the living beings that live in a physical area. Among the living beings that make up the communities in an ecosystem, we can find microorganisms, plants, and animals. We distinguish between two types of ecosystems, natural ecosystems and artificial ecosystems. Natural ecosystems are those areas that have developed without human intervention. Natural ecosystem diversity occurs due to different climates and resources found in every one of them. This way, the animals and plants in a natural ecosystem have developed a series of adaptations related to the environment in which they live. Polar bears, for example, are white to camouflage themselves in the North Pole environment. 
If those environments are destroyed, or if there's a change in the resources, the interaction among the elements of the ecosystem would be altered, and this could endanger their existence. We can classify natural ecosystems in two major types, terrestrial and marine ecosystems. Terrestrial ecosystems include deserts, jungles, woodlands, tundras, taigas, grasslands, or savannas. Marine ecosystems differ, depending on the type of water. That's why there are freshwater ecosystems like rivers and lakes and saltwater ecosystems like seas and oceans. Artificial ecosystems are those areas created by humans and cannot be found in nature, like urban ecosystems, for example, agricultural ecosystems, livestock ecosystems, reservoir and dam ecosystems. As you can see, the interaction established among the living beings and the environment is very important to preserve an ecosystem. Help to look after the environment to preserve the huge diversity of natural ecosystems. Did you like the video? We have so many more! Subscribe by clicking on the seal. Ah, and if you want to keep watching more videos, click on the boxes.